Coming up on today's Code Bear Daily, it is a huge Brownlow special. I'm wearing a suit. That's guys wearing his dad's jacket, and Alex has stolen his wife's tie. But uh, we are going to talk about every single aspect of this Brownlow medal this year. We've got top five, ten picks. We've got head to heads. We've got random bets. We're going to name the last five. It's all going on. Stats guy, what's your favorite pick for today? Just Dan Butler to pull a vote. I'm loving those to pull a vote markets, and I'm on the tie. Back in the tie here. Well, you didn't wear one today, but that's okay. <laughs> Alex, what about you? I already get three votes against Collingwood in round eight. Nice one. This is Count Bro- <laughs> Code Bet Brownlow Daily. It's a great show. Check it out. Welcome to Code Bet Daily. It's a fancy episode. That's right. It's Monday, September 25, a.k.a. Brownlow Day. And this is episode 202, I think, of Code Bet Daily. Uh, it's probably 200, but look, who's really keeping count? I'm your host, James Clements. I'm the very well-dressed editor of a good website called CodeBet. That's right. I'm wearing a tux because you see, gentlemen, I respect the game. I respect the Brownlow medal count. Unlike you, cheapskate, Stats Guy's got a suit jacket on that he found in his dad's closet. And, and Alex, you stole in his wife's like tie. So I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, I'm married all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. And- <laughs> we had a big weekend. Well, that's all we're talking about. Anyway. No. <laughs> Let's get into it. This is Go Bet Daily. I'm joined, as always, by the Pontiffs. Uh, we've got Stats Guy down there in an ill-fitting suit jacket. What's going on, Stats Guy? Oh, I think it fits me perfectly. That's all I'm going to say about that. But yeah, didn't need to get the tie next time. Nice one, Alex. I'm really tired. I'm not happy, but you know what? I got a ticket to the grand final last year and didn't complain about it. Okay. Well, I don't know. How many members are there in Sydney who wanted to go to the game? Uh, let's do it. 60,000. <laughs> Brownlow Daily. That's right. It's Code Brownlow Daily today. We're just going to talk Brownlow medal picks, bets, all the good stuff. Uh, We're going to look at the best top five or top ten pick that we have, uh, our favorite head-to-head bet because there's plenty of head-to-head markets, favorite random bet, which is basically everything else. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, anything that you can bet on pretty much. (laughs) Pretty much, and there's a lot. Uh, We've got a couple of rate my multis, and we've got a best bet, a.k.a. who wins and name your final five for tonight's Brownlow medal count. Gentlemen, are you excited? Uh, sure. <laughs> sure. It's the bloody, it's the Brownlow. Yeah, yeah but they, yeah. they could streamline it and it could be like done in two hours and it's great, but it goes for so long. God, the sooking from Alex Donnelly. <laughs> Who would have, you wouldn't read about it. <laughs> have another sook. It's literally probably shaping up to be the closest Brownlow race in like five years. We're going to have absolute drama by the time it hits round 19 because Nick Dacos gets injured. And it's like, does he have, have enough It'll to hold good, on? Yeah. You know that he got injured in round 19. And we're like, <laughs> it's going to be on for young and old. And I cannot wait. So without further ado, as your master of ceremonies in this very expensive tux that I've worn now twice. <laughs> <laughs> he is wanted to get some use out of it, I reckon. Let's do it. <laughs> Best top five or top ten. Pick, 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 pick. Mine's easy. Toby Green, top ten. Packer in, boys. He is going to go top ten. I love this. This is going to be the sneaky, like, Toby Green slides in, just goes bang through the back half of the season, racks up the ones and twos, gets a couple of threes in there as well, and just sneaks in. You look at some of the predictors, I feel like they sell him a little bit short through the middle of the season and especially down the back half. He had some big game-breaking uh, sort of, I don't know, outlays throughout the season. Performances. Performances is a good word. And there are some ones where it's like, I don't know, he's sort of sitting around that 12, 13, 14, 15 mark and I'm like, nah, you got to give him a little bit more credit there. He's going to go past that 20-point sort of uh, precipice, I think, which should probably get him right there, probably to 22-ish. Yep, would be my guess, and uh, I think he goes top 10. If we're going to go top five, it's a weird one because there's like dudes like Taranto where you go, ooh, top five, there's actually a bit of value, but I just don't feel like he's going to quite get there, and it feels like the five, there's a lot less value sort of floating around for that than for pretty much all the other uh, markets. What would you say there, gentlemen? Does that sound about right? Yeah, I can't really... I can't really argue with it there. I'm sort of been along the same thing all year. About halfway through, is like he is a sneaky top five chance. He just didn't hold on as strong towards the back end of the season. But yeah, still want to be with him in in those and even the handicap, which I'll talk about later. Nice one. All right then, Alex. What is your best top five or top ten pick? Yeah, well, I'm kind of cheating. One of them is a top twenty. Uh, I got a top three. Zach Butters to finish in the top three at a dollar seventy five. 
it's top five or top ten, and you've gone top three and top. I 10. did. I did the same pretty much because <laughs> there's there a bit more value. There's a lot of tops, so it's all that matters. Yeah, Zach Butters top three, dollar seventy five. I think Bont and Dacos are the other two, but a dollar seventy five for him to finish there. He was like a dollar twelve to finish in top five, so I just wanted to go against that and find a bit more value. As I said the other day, I struggle to see who takes votes off him at Port Adelaide. I know Rosie had a good Rosie, year, but yeah, yeah but he, but it's like the year Ollie Wines on. It's like oh yeah, a couple of good games here and there from others, but he was just so good throughout the year. I think that's there. And Chumley Warner, my man, top twenty at two dollars forty. He started off the year like a house on fire. His big games were three vote games. And even the game where he got injured, he would have gone out with a vote or two there. And then the last couple of games, he really warmed into the season, would have picked up a few there for sure. So I think come late, it's sort of a, you know, 18, 19, 20 finish. But there's a couple of votes late in the year that could get him over the line. Nice one. Stats guy. All right. The one that uh, you just crapped on, Tim Taranto, top five, I'm going for. $2.75. I think that's that's really good value. I know that they dropped off towards the end of the season. Tigers didn't have a great season themselves, but even when they were sort of close in games, I reckon he's going to steal a few one and two voters. We also got to talk about his five-game stretch where he was averaging 35 disposals and two goals. Uh, they got three wins during that period. I reckon he could get around that seven to nine vote mark just in that little period alone. Uh, and then he had a random few games like where he got 35 and four goals, uh, three or four goals, I think. So he's going to get a, I think when he goes big, he gets three votes. And I think he's going to get a lot of three votes. Uh, most of the predictors have him around that 22 to 24. I think the AFL one has him 27, which is absolutely ridiculous. That one is the most skewed uh, one out of all of them, I reckon. But is that the one I, you've been yelling about for three weeks? Yeah, I hope it doesn't come true, but they've got Lockie Neal way ahead, which I don't understand, but it might happen. We'll, we'll see. Uh, but I'm going to, yeah. Go him in the top five. He's around that 22 to 24 vote mark on the predictors, which uh, five of the last seven Brownlow counts. If you get around that, you finish in the top five. So uh, I don't mind that. And then I know we're saying top five or 10, but uh, Alex, as Alex said, there's a bit more value in your top 20. Uh, Stephen Cornelio, I really like the top 20. $2.05. I feel like people forgot about him. Everyone's talking about Toby Green, all Australian captain and things like that. But he had an awesome season, sort of wound back the clock a bit. Uh, Kingsley goes, you're, you're playing back in the middle. He was playing forward mostly last year, and nah, he has to go back in the middle. Average 29 uh, disposals, eight scoring moments. Yeah, just think he, he especially towards the uh, second half of the season where they started winning, he was a major reason. Just say Toby gets a three or a two, Cogs would be right there with him. So I really like that uh, $2.05 for top 20. Nice. That's fine, I guess. But <laughs> I don't agree with either of them. I think Taranto, like, I don't know. I don't even know if he scores like, over the last, like, five, six weeks of the season. Yeah, yeah. I, str- I struggle with the Canelio one. It's like you've got so many other blokes like Josh Kelly. There's a couple of Jake Riccardi games. Tom Green's the dude everyone's forgetting about for GWS. He had, like, yeah. 40 every week. Cogs hard to, more hard to ignore here. him. He's more damaging, though, I reckon, Cox. So, yeah, like, but I reckon stands there's, out a bit more. there's also some recency bias given how good he was in the finals. Oh, yeah, he was good. It's like, yeah, but finals don't True. count, unfortunately. True. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Between Kelly, Whitfield, Green, Green, and Cogs, I struggle to see yeah. him getting enough of the volume. So it's a bit of a tough one. But it is a good name to grab out there because I, for a minute there, you might be sitting there going, oh, I've tipped this. this. I think you'll come home like really strong late. So, yeah, if you're betting on that one, Wait, yeah, more towards the end, I reckon. All right, favorite random brown, no bet, 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 bet. Most votes, Carlton, Adam Chair. I mentioned this the other day. Kerno seems to be have like pe- been penciled in for this or Crips. Talk about consistency. Consistency gets your votes in the brown, though, and it also builds your tally. And Chair up is the man where every game that Carlton were half decent in this season, which was moments at the start. Definitely not in the middle. And then the last third where we like, I don't know, one eleven of 12. Pretty good. Not bad. Chair up should basically be racking up like ones, twos, like like until the cows come home. Like He might not have too many threes, but because you might have like that random game where Ch- uh, Kerno does kick like five and you go, all right, well, there's three maybe for Kerno. But we have seen in the past, doesn't really matter if you kick five goals in the eyes of the umpires. They might go, well, the reason you got those five goals is because the worky midfielders, and that's why it's a midfielders award. Mm. I think chair up, top sis, Carlton vote. He's at nine dollars fifty to do so. I don't think Cripps had anywhere near the impact that a lot of the predictors are giving him credit. I for. agree with that one, yeah. And I think chair up got plenty of the ball, had big moments in big games, and I think he tops the Carlton votes. I think we're going to see like a pretty depressed total across the board for the Blues. I think like sixteen might even get it for chair up, and I think Kerno might get like twelve. 
I think Crips will have a surprisingly low thing. I'll get to that in a second. But I think Chera there. And a couple of other ones. Errol Gordon, the handicap. I love the handicap mark. It's plus nine and a half. Lock her in, boys. We are going. Errol Gordon, plus nine and a half, is $7.50. You can't tell me that he can't get to 23 and the winner is 31. Boom. The only problem, though, is is if Zach Butters is uh, in front because the the scratch mark is Nick Dacos. So if you have more votes than Nick Dacos and what's he gets, Butters gets another three and a half on top, we're in trouble. Oh, watch out. Uh, Final margin, one to two votes. I like that as well. It's a good random bet because it does feel like this is going to be super tight. Petrarca, (laughs) under 27 and a half. I feel like Truck hit a bit of a uh, snag towards the end of the season and just gets to 26 and doesn't go far past that. Yep. Uh, Cripps under 16 and a half, as I mentioned, didn't have the grain ba- uh, game-breaking sort of performances we saw last year. The key aspect, I think, of that is the lack of goals. He kicked uh, a fair swag of them last season, was hitting the scoreboard, and then spent the vast majority of this season not doing so until like basically the last couple of weeks. So uh, Dugowie under 15 and a half as well. Similar vibes to Dugowie, just not the consistent performances. He would have 31 week, 15 the next, and even in those 30 possession games, of which there weren't too many anyway, if he did have a sort of big sort of disposal outlay, one of the day guy probably also had like 40 in that same game. <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm so yeah. <laughs> really Dugowie didn't really stamp himself at times across this season, and I don't think he has quite enough to get him across the board in terms of the volume. So... Let's do a rate my multi for some Ooh. unders. Let's do it. Rate my multi. <laughs> yeah, the tune of the season. Christian Petrarca under 27 and a half. Patrick Cripps under 16 and a half. Zach Merritt. Zerrett <laughs> under 20 and a half. And Lockie Neal. This is one that uh, Stats Guys just hit on under 26 and a half. That'll get you $12.37. You can't go wrong betting unders in the brown, though. I'm going to go over that one. $12.37. Gentlemen, raid my multi. Ooh, I'll give it a... Hold on, what am I going to give it? A seven and a half. I'm a bit worried. I know I don't really rate merit, but I still reckon he could get over that 20. I just reckon, yeah, he had a really good finish of the season. So, But I'll give it a yeah, seven and a half, eight. Really like it still. The Neil thing is interesting, I find. So, I think Neil one. I'm going seven, but I like that Neil uh, one I, just I, lucky Neil could get 30. He could get 20. I've got no idea. Yeah. The Neil thing really bugs me because, yeah, as Stats Guy said, right, there's a predictors that are overrating his yeah. – I think most of the predictors are well, overrating It's just – the other thing is the uh, really good player bias or the big-name player bias. That's well, the that's thing what, I'm worried about. That's why, yeah, yeah, that's why Cher is not going to get the most votes for Carton yeah. because he was good when they sucked. And they're not going to get a lot of votes in in those and and Crips and Kerner. Like, who was good? Ah, oh, Charlie Crips. Yeah, yeah Crips. Tips. Yeah, that sort of happened with uh, Dusty. I think the last couple of years as well. We get a random mm. one or two voter, and you go really just because he yeah got got to go off in the boundary or something like that. But yeah, so unders I reckon is tough, but I still I still like that one. Yeah, yeah. Nice yeah. All right, I think we've got – let's go Stats Guy for a couple of uh, random ones here. Yeah, I, I talked about this uh, last week. One of my favorite markets when the brown note comes out is just a player to poll at least one vote. It's it's good fun. Uh, Alex has been all over this last week, so I'm going to jump on it as well. Taron Thomas, I think he absolutely flew home at, uh, to end the season for North, uh, especially in that win against the Gold Coast. It might not come until the very last round of the season, but he will get at least one vote. I think he could even get the three votes in that one. He had uh, in the last four He's weeks, not going to get three. Larky kicked. Nine. Lucky oh, actually, yeah, three sorry. votes. Two. Sorry, I should have said two. Yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Nine's pretty good. <laughs> um, but yeah, two of the last yeah, four weeks, he had a 10 clearance game. So when you're having 10 clearances, you're absolutely dominating with yeah. over 22 disposals. I think you're going to pull at least one vote there. So $1.88, I think it's really good value there. Dan Butler is a bit of a sneaky one as well. $2.20 just to pull one vote. He had multiple games of four plus goals, had a couple of like 20 disposal games. I don't rate his overall season, so I'd like stay under yeah. those total like uh, 10 votes or things like that. But just to bowl one vote, I think he could easily get like a two-vote game here here or there just because when you're kicking four goals, uh, he's also their, one of their main attackers setting up their offense. You're going to poll a vote every now and then. So $2.20, I feel like he's yeah, flown under the radar there for the poll the vote there. Nice one. All right. I think we've got a bunch of Alex random votes, but we might yeah. just save his like insane multi for the very end. Because right. it, <laughs> I agree, yeah. It's really insane. So hit us with some random ones there, Alex. Yeah, so for the first one, uh, Noah Anderson under 18 and a half votes. I talked about this one in the article that's up there on the site now where he'll get the most votes for Gold Coast. No dramas whatsoever. But given they only won, what, eight or nine games throughout the year, it's very hard to see him getting past that threshold, especially in games where Gold Coast were good. You had blokes like Lacocious popping up. Rao was in there. King was in there. So it's like there'll be a mix of votes throughout the season. And the games they lost, well, 
none of them are probably going to get a vote. So I'm ha- happy to go against him there. It's about a dollar eighty two at the. Oh no, sorry, two dollars and five cents at the moment. What am I doing? Uh, Nick Dacos to lead after round ten is a dollar seventy five. Again, we know how how fast yeah, like he starts that. this season. Uh, the round five leads like a dollar twelve. That shows you how quick he's going to be out of the gates here. Uh, Toby Green plus eleven and a half in the handicap at thirteen dollars. Again, he gets to that 2021 mark, you know. I'll be licking my lips there at the $13. Bont under 29 and a half. Uh, I just think he falls short in the last couple of rounds. Those uh, The game against West Coast and then the last round against Geelong, where Trelaw possibly gets three. We may see him finish on that 28, 29 mark. And of course, I need to finish off with some Errol. It's it's what I do. Uh, Errol, over 22 and a half votes at $2. That plus nine and a half that Jim mentioned, I'm all over that as well. But also... Errol to get three votes against Collingwood in round eight at the MCG where the Swans lost by four goals. Collingwood kicked two goals in the last couple of minutes to sort of put that margin in that there. But Errol had 37 touches, seven clearances, a bunch of inside 50s. He was absolutely everywhere. And he's three bucks to get the three votes that day because my check kicked four or five of Collingwood's 10 goals. But like two of them were complete, you know, one meter out jobs. So I think Errol's a really good value to get the three votes there. I walked out of that game going, He's going to win a brown low one day. <laughs> I do love – there are – like I steer clear of actually for the show. Uh, you can go, I think, with our partners at Bet365 yeah. uh, to get the three brown low votes for every game. Yeah. Uh, you can go, well, that was my favourite game of this player and go, I reckon you got the three votes in this one. Boom. But you can go round three, uh, Gold Coast, Geelong. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's tough. Dollar. That's tough. Right? Well, there's – the the Swans gather around game against Richmond. Oh yeah, Tom Papley will get three. What's he going to beat? Ah, oh, he's a dollar twelve. Okay, so it's a bit tough. Some of the ones, but uh, there is a little bit of value in there if you really think you can uh, key in. Speaking of keying in on some actual interesting matchups, how about some head to head bets? Ooh. That's right, our favourite head to head Brownlow bets, 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 bets. <laughs> Love this. Tinglish versus Maxi Gorn. Maximus Gornicus. Uh, I'm going Tinglish. $2.10 is the head-to-head. So Maxi is the favorite there. Again, it feels like a weirdly sort of downish season for Gorn where he missed a couple of games here. They tried to fit Grundy into the, you know, the you know, square peg, round hole, etc. Uh, whereas Tinglish, all he did for most of the season was like be awesome. Hmm. And like consistently in the sort of top four or five performers for uh, the dogs across the season, even if they were sort of up and down all year, which they were, I think Tinglish probably has a little bit more, again, of the consistent vote gathering rather than Gorn, who had some yeah. big, 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 big games. But I think Tinglish just sort of gets those ones and twos here and there because it's with the weird one with the dogs. You saw Libba, you saw Bont, you saw Trelaw, and then it was literally probably Tinglish who's probably going to be at least right there as like the fourth highest vote gatherer, I dare say. He might even beat out Libba. Who knows? Like, it's the weird sort of thing where you got some someone that big and that Gumby-ish. They sort of just get dry. <laughs> he got a lot of the ball as well for a Ruckman, yeah. He got plenty of disposals as well. So he was it's around like an extra the, midfield, yeah. a lot of stuff. So I like him against Maxi Gorn. The other one that was uh, actually I just latched onto then and then realized, I think Alex talked about this last week. Uh, yeah, uh, I talked about it as well. Uh, that's guy as well. There you go. Jordan Dawson over Zach Merritt. Uh, this is an absolute like lock for me. Zeret just absolute butchered it. Jordan Dawson had some massive game breakers. The dollar eighty eight for Jordan Dawson over Zara. Lock me in as that head to head. Alex, yours. Uh, Jeremy Cameron to get more votes than Tim Kelly to start. We all forget how awesome Jezza started off the season. He was going to yeah. kick a hundred and win the brown loaf. That was the call <laughs> yeah. after round five. What do you have like? No, thir- no, that was your call. <laughs> I, know, I I currently have a multi going. Uh, the last leg is tonight. It is Jeremy Cameron to win the Brownlow after Charlie Kerno won the Coleman oh, no. and Sheasel <laughs> won the Rising Star. Just turn the I, TV off. I, like I, put, I put that on. Cash out. Let's go. <laughs> oh, I'm honestly hoping I can say I get to a $50 cash out because I'll take it. Nah, the cash out's currently $2. <laughs> Honestly, take the $2, I reckon. <laughs> no, not worth it. Because <laughs> hopefully it's like, oh, he's got 10 votes in, you know, the first four rounds. Um, yeah, Tim Kelly in a team that won two games. Yeah, awesome. Un- unlucky. It's hard to see him getting more than sort of, you know, eight or nine votes. Jezza will get that 10 to 12 mark uh, and easily clips that. And then Errol Gordon to get more votes than Caleb Sarong. This more falls into the Swans won more games than Fremantle. I know Sarong was good throughout the year. Errol was probably better. And I think he'll also get votes in the games that the Swans lost, whereas Sarong probably won't. 
That's interesting because Sarong's like the late riser in the uh, odds boards here, like where I, folks are just like talking themselves into Sarong, even though he's still got Brayshaw but, there as well. Yeah, but the, but the problem is, so everyone's like, oh, but you know, he, he's a chance. No. Historically speaking, if you go back through like the last 20 years of the Brownlow, what apart from I think it was uh, Gary Ablett, what is Gary, the consistent yeah, yeah. thing about the, the Brownlow have winners? A good team. Their yeah. teams are bloody good. Yeah. You're not agreed. you're not winning it from 15. Let's no, be honest. Like hard. he's a great like he's got no chance of winning the Brownlow. Uh, my point about that though is like Sarong mm. absolutely smashes Brayshaw in like basically oh, yeah. the, the team thing, right? He's so like a dollar 20. <laughs> he's going to win it for Freo. And the question is whether or not you think he sort of banks enough and has like enough good games, especially early on where it was kind of like we didn't quite realize how yeah. bad that was going to be. Yeah. And he might be sort of like racking up yeah. those ones and twos here and there early on for the first 10 rounds and then it maybe falls apart. But, but I still also, like- he's not a vote getter in the past. He only got five last year. So it's like one of those things where you have that breakout year and then maybe it's the next year you start getting the votes. Yep. Yep. I still like it. Like I'm not arguing against yeah. it. I think, uh, I think the idea though is that Sarong – like it's weird that in lots of other folks' estimations, you're like, oh, you could win it, even though he got rubbed out. What's going on? I'm like, I don't <laughs> think the sheer volume at all. What no are we way. talking? Yeah, yeah. He's no, over under twenty three and a half. So, yeah. Well, I probably still. Oh, I'd so go under. Pretty, yeah, I'm going That's, under. Uh, again, as I said, I don't think you can lose money by going unders in the brown low. Uh, <laughs> That's guy. Yeah, Dawson head to head against Merritt. I'm going to talk about it as well. Dollar eighty eight. I think that's going to be one of the best bets of the night. Uh, yeah, I just think Dawson's just much more damaging, especially in attack. Uh, he also uh, Dawson had multiple thirty plus disposals. I think he had thirty five plus disposals and a goal against some of the big teams in losses. So I think uh, Merritt's sort of that outlier. I don't think he's going to get votes in losses. Where Dawson in a couple of losses this season, I reckon he could even pull a two or one vote, which could help him get over that line. I think he'll get around that twenty three uh, vote mark as well and stay in that top twenty. Uh, and then my other one, uh, this is a bit more of a tricky one, but I really like it. Jack Viney head to head against Andrew Brayshaw. So Viney, he just turned into an absolute beast uh, when Oliver was out. He had, and I think he'll come home really strong, much like I suggested a few other players before. 12 of the last 13 games this season, he had 25 plus disposals. He was an absolute lock for your multis, as we talked about on our AFL show. Just think he was extremely damaging and it's much more, much easier, as Alex just mentioned, to get votes in a winning side. Melbourne simply had six more wins than Frio. Uh, Andrew Brayshaw definitely wasn't at his best this season. He's still an absolute gun, but I reckon he's only going to get 15 or 17 votes. I was really surprised that he's the favorite in this market. So $2.10, I was going to take Jack Viney, even if he was like a $1.75 favorite, but he's $2.10 against uh, Brayshaw. So Viney absolutely killed in the second half of the season. I reckon, yeah, Brayshaw will be ahead maybe first half, and then once that Oliver injury hits and the second half of the season where Viney just blew up, I think he's going to easily surpass Brayshaw here. Yeah. Cool. That's a great spot. Back yeah. to that Dawson one. He's two bucks to get the three votes against Collingwood in round 15 where oh. he had 35. Dacos is seventy, but it's like I reckon Dawson was the best on ground. He was the best player. A long way. He had 35 and a goal. Yeah. He they, was lost awesome. by, they lost by a point. Mm. Very nice. All right. Now it comes down to brass tacks. Let's do the damn thing. Best bet, who wins? Who wins? The final markets, as I look at them right now, uh, with our partners over there at Ladbrokes right now, Bont and Dacos are at $2.90. Butters is at five fifty. dollars 50 Petrarca six fifty. dollars Lockie Neal, 13 and then boom. That's your top five. Taranto's at 51 Goulden, 51 Connor Rosie is at 81 And Dawson, 81 Uh Very obviously... I've been yelling about Butters all season. I've loved Butters' this year. I think he lands on 31 votes. I think he just sort of sneaks through with especially that win streak that they had. I feel like a lot of the predictors are actually underrating some of his performances where they're like, oh, but Dan Houston had a good game too, man. It's like, yeah, that's fine. But Butters <laughs> is the reason he won. What are you doing? Shush. Uh, Butters, I think, lands on 31. I think that's ahead of Dacos who gets to 30. That's a lot of votes. He's there. Uh, Bont, I think, gets to 28, Neil to 26, and Petrarca 25. So that's why I've gone the under for Neil. I just don't think he has the, again, that top level sheer three vote getting games that we saw when he actually won the brown load. Like, yeah. It's kind of weird to me. Uh, Petrarca, same sort of vibe, right? He sort of was right there at the end. He probably got to 25, 26, and then they didn't do too much down the stretch. Bont, is going to be the one where it's like he could come just like from the, I don't know, get that random three-vote game a la Patrick Cripps last year and uh, snag the Brownlow out of the ether. But I think it's Butters. I think he just has like the sheer weight of the season across what? 
what, 24 rounds, right? We've got Butters at points where Port became the sensational team. Basically, after the sort of from gather round on, they were the talk of like, oh, they could get the top spot. And a lot of the reason for that was Butters. Rosie has a lot of touches. He has a lot of goals. I feel like Butters is just the like main driving part of that midfield, though, and that's the sort of thing that's going to be sticking in the umpire's heads. I think he can do it. So at $5.50, I'm all over Zach Butters to win the Brownlow. Ooh. Gentlemen, let's go with Stats Guy because then we can finish off with Alex's uh, insane multi. multi. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. <laughs> for, very, very excited for that. Uh, I'm going to go yeah against that. I still think Butters, Butters can finish in the top two or three, but I'm going to go the tie here. I think uh, I've been saying it for the last month and a half. Dacos and Bont, I feel like, are going to both finish around that 30 mark, 30 uh, vote mark. I think Dacos, as you just mentioned, is going to get to that 30 vote mark and stop because he got injured, obviously. But then the Bont, I reckon he, he's going to be on the 30 or 28 vote mark heading into the last three rounds. Uh, and then he didn't really poll a two or a three, I don't think, as Alex mentioned, in the last couple of rounds. So I think he's going to get stuck on that 30 vote mark. It's going to, I reckon it's going to come into the last round. It's going to be a tie. Uh, people are going to go, oh, Bont surely gets a vote in the last round. Don't think he did enough uh, to get oh, here over the line. Big I think cool. I reckon he might, get one. Yeah, he might get one. So I reckon he's going to be, I did all the sort of, Went through each game on the predictors and things like that. I think he could get a, a one. So he might be on 29 or 30 around then. He's either going to win by one or I think it's going to be a tie. But I'm going to lean the wa- towards a tie just because it's a bit better value at $5. So you get, I think it's about $2.83 bucks for those two guys to win. But I really think this could be a tie. And even uh, if randomly I don't choose it, but butters ties, I don't really care because it's going to be a tie. So I really think there's going to be a few guys around that 30 vote mark. So the $5 is worth taking on. But I'm going to go, yeah, Dacos and Bont to tie at the top. Then I'm going to go butters uh, second slash third, however you want to uh, call it, then Petrarca. And then I'm very torn on Taranto and Neil around that 26 vote mark at the fourth and fifth. But I'll probably just bump Taranto above him. I know it's going to be tough, but I'm just going to put Taranto there. I think the best Taranto bet is for him to be leading at round 15, like that sort of thing. The $6. Where, um, yeah. yeah. I think that's still probably my favorite look for Taranto because I just don't think he's going to get anything in that second half. I, I hope not because I'm on Nick Dacos to lead out right at 5, 10, and 15 at 4.50 and it's currently $2.50. Ooh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that's short and dramatically. <laughs> <laughs> it has. Nice. And I think it's also worth bearing in mind in terms of like the total votes uh, that we're sort of talking about, like I'm just sort of like butters 31 it's kind of that thing where you could also just knock two votes off all of these totals and go, yeah. Butters 29, Dacos 28, yeah. Bont 26, and like that's probably much more likely. Yeah. The- there's no consistency with the actual – I was looking through each year. There's no real consistency. This The Brown, though, one year will have 24 well, votes as a winner. It's, one year, it's, it's, 35. More, it's, it's yeah. more high voting now than it, than it has been in the past. Yeah. Yeah, you got some more players standing out. And Give yeah, me the year even. someone won with 17 votes. That's yeah, I think uh, Libba won with 18. <laughs> I was looking at before. That's crazy. <laughs> All right, Alex, bring us home. What is your final five? Yeah, so my top five, it's actually the same top three as you. Butters, Dacos, Bontempelli, and then I've got Petrarca in for fourth. I think he just has enough gear in that middle part of the season to have him there. And then Tim Taranto in for fifth. I think his body of work throughout the season gets him in there. I think Lockie Neal, as we've said, misses out. He's probably sixth or seventh, just due to the pure fact that throughout the season, he wasn't great. A lot of players around him were very good. There'll be games where Dunkley takes votes off him. Chucky Cameron will take votes off him. Bloody Joe Danaher will. Will Ashcroft, Ashcroft will. Yeah. So yep. there's a lot that's going on throughout the season that may just drag him down a little. And to be honest, I don't think he cares because he's going to be a premiership winner this Saturday. Called it. This is the Brownlow Show. Hashtag yeah. spoiler alert. Yeah. Right. <laughs> now, let's finish off. With the world's biggest brown loan, <laughs> Rate My Multi. Rate My Multi. Is anyone else nervous for this? <laughs> it's 15 weeks. Whoa. Nice. And, I've already, and I'm already on. Um, so we'll start off with the most obvious one because most obvious one is the dollar I won. Nick Dacos to get the most votes for Collingwood. Then we go into Jordan Dawson, most votes Adelaide. Josh Dunkley, most votes without Neil. Charlie Kerno, most votes for Carlton. Zach Merritt, most for Essendon. Sarong for Freo. Jezza Cameron for Geelong. Noah Anderson. Toby Green for GWS. LDU for North. Butters, Errol. Shy Bolton, most votes without Taranto. Now, here's the value kicker. Rowan Marshall, the most votes for St Kilda, the big Ruckman. Ooh. I think you'll get a few there to get past, uh, what is it, Sinclair or Steele? One of them don't care. St Kilda suck. And then Christian Petrarca, <laughs> most votes no one thrown in just for a bit of uh, barbecue sauce at the end. That 15 legger is $94.77. Oh, I mean, I don't agree with the Kerno leg, obviously, and yeah. but I do 
absolutely love that Roman Marshall one. That is an absolute ball breaker because the Jack Steele's Sinclairs of the world. Oh, I'd be back in Sinclair in that one, but I, I see where you, where you come from. It's like, oh, we might just give it to Crouch as well. It's like, nah, they just butcher the ball every time. Like Rowan Marshall had way more like impact on those games than anybody yeah. else. That's a really good one. I just, yeah, there's like one or two legs that I don't quite agree with, but I'll still give it eight for gumption, which is good. What do you reckon, stats guy? Oh, I'll give it a four, a six. Just, I really think uh, Sinclair's going to run away with the votes there. I think he was their most influential player. Ruckman, just in general, very hard to get votes. True, but I love I, it. I like Kerno actually for Carlton as well. I think I know he's the favorite. I think is he the favorite? Or well, it was a dollar eighty when I put it on. So okay, yeah, I I really like Kerno for that one as well. When he's kicking a bag of what is he kicking ten and nines and eights, you got to give him the three votes. So don't mind him. Nice one. Well, there you go. Three votes, Jay Clements. Two votes, A Donnelly. Oh, one. of course. <laughs> Al Medallion. I'll, take a, I'll take a vote. I would have given three votes, G G Prado personally, G. Prado. but that's just me. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to come out of this one. It's like going to be like some alien head on a suit. And uh, it's like, <laughs> nice one. But that is it. Code Bet Daily, a.k.a. Code Brownlow Daily today. We'll be back on deck tomorrow for a full show as per usual. Uh, we'll also have, I think, a couple of other little sneaky bitch and bobs here and there. But we'll also be doing a pregame live stream for the Brownlow. That's right. Ooh. We'll go through a bunch of these bets and all the best sort of things because a bunch of the bookies this year are letting you live bet with the Brownlow as it all sort of goes along. So that'll be pretty interesting. But we'll set you up for it tonight at around 7, 7.30. I think the count starts at 8. So Ugh, if you so in, listen to us. It's going to be awesome. Donnelly's already crying about how late <laughs> it is. Like, oh, it's a Monday. I've got to get me beauty sleep. <laughs> I was up to 1 a.m. breaking my TV. I'm oh, absolutely, absolutely wrecked. God, I hate everything. <laughs> I thought you were for a horrible team in Arsenal. But anyway. I was about to say, at least we got a point, stats guy. <laughs> Uh, at least we got trophies, lots of trophies. Either. <laughs> uh, well, get right around all of our shows, the AFL show, the NRL show, huge weeks ahead for those ones because, of course, we have a pair of grand finals. We've got NFL Australia. That's a massive one this week. It's been a chaotic week three in the NFL. We have, obviously, Code Bear Daily. We have a whole, hold all tickets. There you go. The boys uh, had a good week this week, so it was a good week to tune in. Nice. Nice one. And uh, that's about it. There's lots of other stuff going across all the socials as well. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, X and Threads. So like, star, review, do what you got to do. Send in any questions via the socials. Join us with the live stream tonight. It'll be across all those uh, social platforms as well. Well, most of them. Anyway, uh, but there you go. Thank you, Stats Guy. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Cheers. Three votes. G Prado. That's right. And Absolutely. thank you, of course, to Gerald for producing. He does a great job. He's the real... The real brown low medal winner tonight. Oh, there yeah. you go. What do we say, Stats Guy? Gamble responsibly. And don't do don't go hog wild on the old brown low, but it's pretty fun, isn't it? Oh, yeah. it's be no, go hog wild. <laughs> May as well. The Let's get a yeah, fun one tonight. Join us on the live stream. So may all your picks come in. Happy punting. And we will catch you on the live stream tonight and on the show tomorrow. Go bed daily. Out. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.